and we ain't never got a box again. Well, right. well, 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 I already been getting these back, but but but, but now it's time for you is. to get your just do. Yeah, you know the deal. We back again. Yo. A round of applause for Jersey's finest. A lot of content creators not worthy, but they minus. They get offended and start singing like the whiners. Talking like they tough, but it's only screaming and whining. My homie just do us the catch you don't come to Your squad get run through By the time you come to you duck food You suckers talk tough on the internet Revealing all your threats Now we got you trapped in the net Just do be on this grind Y'all better hustle up You dead lifted 90 pounds We doing muscle ups There's really no comparison His voice sound like a derringer Throwing a towel that's just embarrassing My dog just very philosophical And psychological and he mixed it all with good boxing news. These YouTubers feel like Bishop, I guess they got the juice. But it's lonely at the top to just to feel like child abuse. Be respectful, he don't want to talk wild and loose. If you can't relate, you get dismissed like a mild dispute. These weird cats would tell lies, did they hide the truth? Why beyond views? You lose your life when you collide with dude. It's just do boxing. Or you cowards quit jocking. Kirk is official with no other options. Yeah, yeah. You know the deal. Judah Ben, we in the spot. Just do boxing. Yeah. And of course, shout out to Mrs. Doom. Holding the whole family down. Word them up, word them up. What's good was good was good with the family we back again as promised man the grind don't stop man today man we gotta you know we gotta we got a special guest that's that's gonna stop through man um marquise taylor we all seen his uh his last performance over uh his win over his big upset win over yo elvis gomez that you know I know many people picked him to lose just as they did in many of his other fights. You get what I'm saying? Um, He's going to be stopping through it, man. Um, Y'all know most importantly over here, we don't do interviews. We do bills, right? So I just want to build with Champ, man, somebody that we really should get behind. And, um, again, it's – you know, it's much like Cool Boy Steph in a sense, right? I feel like Cool Boy Steph is that throwback type of fighter that you got to support, win, lose, or draw. And I feel like Marquise Taylor also has that energy that, you know, they ain't ducking no smoke, had a hard road, battle tested. A guy that they, you know, put in many in many situations to constantly be the B-side and for him to constantly, uh, you know, overcome the odds and beat the odds is just, is just nothing short of, of impressive, you know what I'm saying? So... I just wanted to highlight, you know, we wanted to highlight Chant, man, and, and show love, man, and, and let him know that we really support him, man. We behind him 100%. Oh, okay. So here we go, man. Let's get to it, man. Let's get Champ in the building. There you go. What's going on, Champ? How you feeling? What's going on? Feeling good, man. How you feeling? That's feel? what I like to hear. Man, so... To the family that's in the building, man. Y'all already know who we got. We got our board, marvelous Marquise Taylor in the building. 15 and one, two draws, one KO. Don't let that deceive you because we're going to get into that. You know, he's standing at 6'1 with a 76 and a half inch reach, man. And we all seen this man just come off 
a big, what I consider a big upset win. I mean, they were probably upset. I knew what time it was, but, you know, we seen him come off his big win over your Elvis that I know a lot of people expected him to lose, but we all see how that turned out, right? So we're going to get into that. But before I even ask a question, I want to ask, how you feeling today, champ? How you feeling? Feeling good. Feeling good, man. Already back in the gym, you know, cut healing up, so... Right, and just good, man. Come on, marvelous. You ain't feeling marvelous. Mar marvelous ain't feeling marvelous, man. Well, you know, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm feeling good, but you know, the job not finished. You know what I'm saying? Right. Until I get a world title, you know. Oh no, nah, job ain't done. But now nah, I just wanted to make get your energy right, man. Make sure marvelous feeling marvelous, man. And I want to welcome you to the Just Do platform, man. Just Do Boxing platform. I'm your host, KB. Not only, and this is not an interview, I repeat, this is not an interview. This is a build between me, you, and the people. And we just gonna highlight, I think, what I what I feel like is some significant um, points in your career that kind of led you to this point. And, you know, you have a nickname, Marvelous, but you also have another new nickname that I think is very fitting that you rightfully deserve and you earned it. And a lot of times guys have nicknames that don't really fit them. But in this case, I'm going to highlight some 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 moments in your career. I'm going to jog your memory a little bit. But I think um, we're going to be able to, you know, understand how you got to this point with the nickname, the old snatcher. You get what I'm saying? Um, I just wanted to ask, you know, um, we now I want to I wanted people to understand something. Right. I want to highlight, like I said to him, some moments in his career that kind of led him to this point so we could get a, a real understanding of what type of fighter this is and why we need to get behind fighters that represent in this manner. You know what I'm saying? I wrote down some stuff because we got some questions. Like I said, you got significant, what I call significant wins that I feel like you were put in there to lose, maybe the B side, maybe they were expecting you not to come out on top and you upset the apple cart time and time again. So, I mean, and I, I could just imagine how difficult your road has been. And again, you're battle tested. And I believe you, 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 you're what I call a throwback fighter because you're, you'll fight anybody. You get what I'm saying? And you got a hell of a story to tell. And we're going to get to it, man. Like, we all know you got just one loss. That was to Ladarius Miller, who was also undefeated. You get what I'm saying? That's your fault back in 2015. But after that, you turned around 2016, April 1st, and you fought an 8-0 Oscar Torres. Do you remember take me through it? That was your your first O, you know what I mean? Yeah. On your way to building this nickname that you got. Yep. So um you said my first loss came to Darius Miller, like right. uh, a year before that happened. And uh, right after I lost to to uh Darius, you know, I got back in the lab, was training hard. You know, I didn't know when I was going to fight again, but I was just training hard, you know, trying to come back to events that lost mm -hmm. and uh, all to, you know, go fight Oscar Torres. So I was already in the gym training hard. I think they called me like three weeks. I think it was like three week notice for that fight. Mm -hmm. I was already going hard in the gym. And uh, I just remember like, you know, going to that fight with the mind, the mindset of like, you know, this is it. It's like, three and one i'm like you know i can't i absolutely cannot lose this fight and become right. three and two and right. it's like you go in and be in a journeyman like really you know you start mm -hmm. off with a you you know you go into being a journeyman so like I, you know i didn't want that to happen so i still wanted to be a world champion one day you know i still wanted right. to be one of the greats so you know i trained as hard as i could Mm -hmm. And I just took that mindset to the fight where I couldn't lose. You know what I'm saying? I just got better and better and better and better every fight after that. I just built, I built on that win and just, you know, every training camp got better. Of course, every fight got better. Like I look back at the fight with um, what Oscar Torres. Like mm -hmm. I really hate watching that fight to be honest with you, because <laughs> like I'm way, way, way better. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like. It's like, say a fighter was trying to look at film on me. Right. Like, that fight, you ain't really going to get nowhere because I don't, you know, I, I still fight similar to that, but way, way more sharp. polished. Right. But that's way, why 
that's why I'm highlighting these wins because we're gonna yeah. get there. Because you, you listen, this, this is you ain't have no easy road, bro. Simply put, and I ain't here to you know stroke egos. I'm here to be straight. This, is, this is not an easy road, bro. You constantly being, you just came off a loss. And you already, you know, against an undefeated opponent, then you turn right around. That's why I highlighted it this way and for another undefeated guy. Just think about the pressure and things. And, you again, it's a guy that you came on top. I think this was the start. This was the birth, in my opinion, of what is now a very fitting nickname, the old snatcher, man. And, and that was just, it's just so we keep in count, family. That's number one right there. <laughs> that was back in, I was like, 2016, you fought Oscar Torres. So cool, like I told you, I'm gonna jog, jog your memory just a bit, but you're gonna see where I'm going with this. Now, yeah. in February 13th of 2018, you get what I'm saying? Now, you know, you eight and one, you get what I'm saying? You, you ex Then you fight the very experienced Kermit Centron, who had 39 wins in a total of 48 fights, with you coming into that fight eight and one, man. Take me through it, man. Talk to me, what was that like? Um. So I originally got that fight, you know, because I was uh I was in the gym, you know, right? Talking mess to uh to my promoter Marshall Kaufman. Mm -hmm. You know, I heard him say something about you know uh Cameron Centron opponent had fell out, and right. again I was in the gym already going hard, you know, telling him you know I want to fight, you know I'm ready to fight again, you know what I'm saying I was in the gym going hard, and he had said something about Cameron Centron need to fight at this time. I was fighting 147, mm -hmm. and uh, you think you ready for for conversation? And I was like, man, I does conversation. <laughs> you know, what I'm I was just talking back. So he was like, you sure you want? He was like, I get it for you. And I was like, man, put I was like put conversation on the phone right now. Mm -hmm. right to his face, so mm -hmm. he do it. I'm talking shit. He was like, all right. He was like, I'm not fighting you at 47, though. You had to come up to 54. So that actually was the first time that I, I went up to 54 to fight Kermit Central because he wouldn't come down to 47. He said, I had right. to come up. Right. I was a true 47 pounder, though. Right. You know, so I went up to 54. And uh, I feel like my promoter got me that fight to kind of teach me a lesson. I feel like, you know, mm -hmm. I feel like he wanted to teach me that because I always used to, you know, talk to talk like even back then you know what i'm saying say, man, you believe okay. in yourself right you know I mean? like right. these opportunities is over right. so i felt that fight as a big opportunity to, to show you know what i'm saying that that i'm gonna be a world champion and that's exactly what i did with that fight you know that fight lasted three rounds right it ended due to a, a accidental head but mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, that was that was the way that Kermit Central got out that fight you know, he got he got a little small cut on the side of his mm -hmm. eye. Mm -hmm. I'm hit. Yep. Yes, sir. It's from rounds one to three. Mm-hmm. Ashing on him bad. Mm-hmm. So right, a body shot, you know, he called, you know, he he put his hand over his nuts. Right. My bad, somebody try to call. He had put his oh. hands on his, his, his nuts like I had hit him low, but it really was a clear body shot. Right. I had just, other than the body side, just beating on him the first three rounds, and right. you know he started, you know, you know he started putting them the vet moves on. He started leaning with his head. He actually caused the head, but yeah, that, that looked like a way out. That cut yeah. him over when he got the head, but he, you know, he pleaded to the ref that he couldn't see. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. he got that fight with no contest, but right. um, that was a fight that I felt like showed my team, my promoter, like. You know, like damn, like you just see what just happened because I, I ain't gonna I beat the shit out of Kevin right? right, right. And he was looking for a way out. He was looking for a way out. That was, was good. But again, and just to highlight this, uh family, this 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 at the time, this guy's a natural 47 pounder. You know, what I mean, having to jump up at eight and one and fight a guy with not only 39 wins but 48 professional fights. I just don't think you could name a ton of guys that's doing that. And he was calling for the smoke. And if it hadn't been for, I'm just going to call it what it is, a guy looking for a way out. The veteran got in there with a young guy and didn't, didn't, didn't want it, and he found his way out. He got his way up out of there. It was a no contest, but nonetheless, I'm pretty sure that, you, you know, for what it is, you got your experience and, you know, on to the next. And I just want to highlight another 
what I feel like is a, a significant win. You know what I mean? I think you you building something special over here by by you know not turning down smoke and taking fights that just straight up people probably expecting you to lose and you coming in there each and every time and, and upsetting the apple car. So again, just moving on, moving past Kermit Centron. Like I said, um, you had a fight in 2018, April 20th, man. You go in there with a guy named Jimmy Williams, if you remember, 14 and 0, 14 0 1. Uh, what was that like for you? Coming off your fight with Centron now, your most experienced guy to date. And then you right, I just want to highlight something right after fighting a guy that with a ton of experience, 48 total fights, 39 wins. He turns around again and fights another undefeated guy, 14 and 0, man. Jimmy Williams, take me through. If oh, you remember. Um eager to, to get back in the ring and um right because you know uh i had just fought the biggest fight in my career at the time with Kurt Dishon. I yeah. she, like i was killing them and i didn't get no credit for it you know i didn't get the win right like this, and, you know you know so just frustrated i wanted to get back in the ring with with somebody that was you know undefeated had a great record i still feel like i didn't have the respect from my team at the time. I didn't, you know, I still, you know, people still and stuff like, you know what I'm saying? Right. Going into these hard fights or whatever, you can't keep doing this or whatever. And I just, all I said, even back then, I just knew, I'm like, bro, like, better than all these fighters. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just want to prove it. Like, I'm tired of, you know, people telling me, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, hey, you know, you know, you go into dangerous fights too much, or this and that. I just always felt as though, I was better and I was ready, you know. Never got the shot to show it. So right. going on box rec one day, just going down the schedule, you know, mm -hmm. just be who's who's about to fight. And sometimes when you go on box rec, uh, a lot of undefeated guys don't be having opponents. Right. You know? At the time, I was finding I was just going, you know, down the schedule and I would click search on up. Uh, Search on welterweights, so it was just welterweights. Listen to what this man is telling y'all he's doing. <laughs> to get I was just going down the list, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Yeah, meanwhile, I'm in the gym going hard. You know, I'm training hard in the gym. Case you know, going down, and I see, boom, Jimmy Williams, 14 and 0. It was like six weeks until he fought, and he didn't have no opponent. Right. So, uh, thing found out who the match record was. Mm -hmm. I was like, "Look, man, y'all jump on this." You know what I'm saying? You call my promoter, let them know that you know we trying to fight right here. You know, on this card against this guy. Boom, we got it done. Um, through the grace of God, we got it done through Twan. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, in Vegas. He was putting the card together, you know, and he heard, you know, what was going down, boom, that I wanted to fight, you know, Jimmy Williams. They actually had found an opponent, but when I called, somehow the matchmaker and the promoter knew who I was. Right. And it was like, yeah, we'd rather you fight him. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. And I ain't gonna lie, the, you know what I'm saying, the, the, the money wasn't that great at all, but. Right. But you, then, you, was, you was on a mission. It wasn't about the money. I was right. like, get a 14 and 0 solid opponent, you know, right. boom. Yes, you know, on the Red Jones Jr. card, I was like, boom, another opportunity to, to you know what I'm saying? To mm -hmm. showcase that talent. Right. I'm a, you know, I you know, I see Jimmy Williams, you know, I see he was strong, you know what I'm saying? Got like, you know, had good power, but you know, experience wise, I was like, you know, I got this, you know what I'm saying? Right. You know. I got this, you know what I'm saying? So I already knew in my mind, like, I just needed the opportunity. I already knew what I was about to go do, you know? Right. All right. You know, yeah. Another another good win, man. This man searching box rec, man. Checking schedules, man. Looking for opponents to get smoked. And then you, you coming across guys that, that ain't took an L. And again, it's just a very... um you know, unusual way about going through things. Your path, I think, is very different than a lot of people. And again, I can't stress enough that it's, it's one more reason to support what you got going on because a lot of people wouldn't show that level of dedication and finding 
finding an opponent, getting a smoke, and then having to fight a guy that's not only undefeated, pretty solid guy, definitely good guy, and then the money not be right. But you, you so much, you locked in and you're on a mission, and it was bigger than the money at the time. So, again, it just I think his story, and I'm not saying nobody else's don't, you know, everybody makes sacrifices, but I just think yours is a little bit different. And that's what we're here to highlight. I think some of the sacrifices you made to put yourself in the position you in. And it just wasn't it wasn't an easy road, bro. So I, I commend you. I respect it, man. Jimmy and what Jimmy Williams took his first loss, you know, back back in 2018. And that that's so we count. So we keep in track. Yeah, man, the old snatcher is, is really live and well. That's that's two, by the way. And, uh, you know, you had it again. You just you you continue to keep the train rolling. Right. And um, that was the second O that you snatched. Like I said, just the birth of a real nickname that I, I just like, I think is dope. And, uh, you know, August 3rd, 2018, you know, you fight um, Rachmanov. And now I know, now I know, you know how they was building and pushing this guy early and you caught him at when he was what, 10 and no with six KOs. Yeah. You remember that fight, man. Tell me about that one. So, you know, all right, boom, I get from feeding off, from the fight with Jimmy Williams, you know, mm -hmm. I gave his first his first old feeding off that fight. Boom! I get this, I get this call. You know, I'm in the gym, going hard. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we get the call for this. Mm -hmm. Of course, boom! We accept it. You know, we you know we're going into enemy territory. We fighting one of Mayweather fighters. You know, mm -hmm. invade his card. But you know, we like man, we. We gonna take it because we want to get some get back from the time I lost to to one of Mayweather fighters. Right. My first year, right. So, like, you know what? We gonna get some get back. So, you know, I had some great sparring. I had a great camp for that fight. I was mm -hmm. actually uh, Imantis Stanionis for that fight. Right. Oh yeah. World champion. Mm hmm. See, putting that but work in. Yeah, I was getting that good work in. Right. You know what I'm I had a great camp. You know, went into that fight and said we kind of knew, you know, we was going to give him a fight he never saw before, which was kind of the same thing I did to uh, Yo this We was going to smash into him. You know, he used to fighting guys, trying to box him and all that. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. He getting, probably getting a phone call. Y'all Y'all know how it be. My bad. My bad. All good. I know how it be getting a phone call. It's all good. Uh, yeah, we basically, you know, we was like, we're going to give him a fight he ain't seen before. We're going right. to um, let's see if he can box. Let's see if he can fight going back. And, uh, of course, he, he couldn't fight going back that well. And uh, we broke him down. Um, and we, we got the big win, you know. It still was tough, though. You know, I had um, I had got a point taken away from me early in the fight, I believe. Right. Like the second third round, Rev took a point from me for right. uh, allegedly hitting low. But, you know, I said we behind enemy territory, so we know what it is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, know? you already know what you're up against, right? Going to the body, I couldn't let that, you know, the ref, you know, throw me off. Because I said, when you're on the B side, you want in the enemy territory, you should already expect, you know, the, the cards going to be stacked against you. So you just right. got to know, focus and not let anything, you know, deter right. you, knock right. you off. I kept going to the body, breaking them down, clear shots, bagging them up, you know, and just winning every round, you know, and I got that big win. And thankfully, you know, uh, the judges you can try to, you know, well, I mean, I made it really hard. I, you mm -hmm. know, I threw a lot of punches, you know, I banged them up pretty good. So I said I left no doubt and uh, – I got that win, that pushed me to 10 and one. And then that's when it's like, after that win, I was like, you know, mm -hmm. what the, what's what next? That, you know what I'm saying? That right. was like, right. And same people that were like, man, you can't keep taking dangerous right now. I was like, now what? You know, I'm, I'm going, right. to, I'm boy card doing it off the right. beach. Right. You know and and that weeks before that fight, they had called after we had already signed a contract for the fight. They called us two weeks. Was like, hey, you know, just letting y'all know we're gonna put his NABF belt on the line. You know what I'm right. saying? We'll put his belt. We was like, oh shit, like we fighting for a strap now. You know what I'm saying? Right, so, right. That's how I got the NABF belt. 
beating it mm -hmm. on him. Right. But it was just like at that point, I was like, all right, now all right, I'm 10 and 1 now. I just be, I just whooped Kermit Centron and took two O's. Mm -hmm. One year, it was like, all right, you know, I, I feel like it's time for me to get some show box looks. Like, you know, what's up? Like, you know what I'm right. saying? I don't want to go back down. You know what I'm saying? I want right. to. I should be on Showbox. I'm looking on TV and I'm seeing these guys that I would smash. Like, you know, why am I not on these big platforms? Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Doing backyards being undefeated. Like, I'm seeing guys' careers elevating and I'm doing twice as much. Why am I not? You know what I'm saying? Why am I not? I'll tell you out there spoiling the apple cart, man. Yeah. Kicking people ass, man. <laughs> Snatch your nose, man. You, but you would think you would be getting treated better. But again, this is why we here today to highlight this. Yeah. Why am I not getting a big promoter? Why not? Why am I getting right. a big choosing these other fighters over me? And right. then I was, oh, I'm not knocking people out. And I'm like, oh, I understand. Like, mm -hmm. That Sanjor fight, I got a cut in that fight. My right hand was was fractured. Right. And I never talk about this, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I feel right. Like, talk to me. Right. You know what I'm saying? But I'm like, you know, I'm putting it on the line. My head hurt. I, I had a cut in that fight from the head, but, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I'm, saying? I'm going through adversity these times. Like, I'm going right. Through and not complaining. Taking the tough fights, fighting these undefeated dudes and snatching O's. I'm just like, man, I just felt like I wasn't getting the credit that that I deserve, you know what I'm saying? Right. And I in in that fight, so I had to take a little time off because I hurt my hand and I had a cut. So mm -hmm. I couldn't come right back to the ring and and then uh I think my next fight was like nine months later I fought Luke Santa Maria. Right. Yeah, I'm familiar. I'm familiar. Mm -hmm. I was a uh, sparring Jamel Charlo. He was he was supposed to fight Harrison. Harrison had got injured during camp, so Carter right. was Carter had to come in fight him. And I was in his camp sparring him, and that was a real good camp. You know, I was getting top notch work with Jamel, and um, the night of the fight, I had like bad acid reflux, like just flared up on me, and wow. I fought. Right. I have to make no excuses with acid reflux and really I you know we was we was happy I couldn't really breathe like right. I, just, I couldn't really breathe at all. I was just happy to to you know reel enough in to pull a draw that day. Right. Honest, right, right. My ass that day, you know what I'm saying? Right, like, right. <laughs> right. Right. You know, shout out to Luke. Like I said, I ain't gonna, you know, make no excuses. He came to fight that that uh that night, and um, I, I, so I had bad ass reflux, and we had a draw. And, that, and that's cool. I mean, cause you again battling through adversity and not trying to make no excuses, but it's the difference between <laughs> excuses and reasons, and that's real. That is not an excuse. And like you say, he still only fought to a draw. But again, the one thing I noticed about you, you had that type of performance, but then you always seem like you go for more after that. Whereas yeah. a guy would be looking to uh, let me get a soft touch. Um, let me get a guy I know I'm going to beat. You don't do that. You turn around and, you know, like I said, after taking your third O from Rachmanov, you turn around, you fought another guy that, that's not on the record as taking the O, but we know what happened. We got to highlight this, man. Certain fight back in 2022, February 18th, man. Mr. 9 and 0 Paul Crow. <laughs> Man, a, a draw, but I think I think it's a lot of people out there outside myself that feel like we know why that was a draw. In some cases, that's like telling you that that's you know who lost by who by, by them making it a draw. And I just didn't feel like that was a draw. I feel like you beat that dude, and they just didn't want to put the L on his record. You know what I mean? At the time, so you tell me what you what you felt about that fight when you fought Paul Crow. How did you feel going into it? And that fight that was um. So right before that, that's my first fight. Well, not my. I had went to Colombia, right? I had like a little, like, like a couple months before that. I like Columbia. that too, if you want, because I for, I forgot to mention that I, I did hear you mention you you went to Colombia to take a fight, right? Yeah, because right. I haven't before that. I haven't fought in two years because of the pandemic, bro. And that's right. another thing. Talk to me. 
back. Let's rewind back for a little bit, right? Okay. So right, and Maria fight, right? Mm -hmm. I come back to again fight Jeremy Nichols, who's nine and one, who only had one loss. Right. Right. I remember right. that. Southpaw, strong Southpaw. I beat him. Right after that, boom, the pandemic happened, right? Right. So coming off a win against another good opponent that was nine and one. You know, I was mm -hmm. nine and I was nine and one with a draw. He was nine and one. Mm -hmm. And then right after that, boom, the pandemic happens. And you know, you remember those fights in the bubble? In the bubble, yeah. Right. Yeah. Bro, I didn't get one fight in the bubble, bro. I was in the gym for two years straight. Didn't get no action because yeah, of the pandemic. Right, right. Coming off the pandemic, we went to Columbia to, you know, just to get my feet, you know, my feet wet, get back in the ring. You know, it's been two years. This man you know? going searching to Columbia to get smoke after being out the ring two years. That whole bubble experience, he didn't get to participate in none of that. But yet and still stayed the stayed the course, stayed focused, went to Columbia, talked to him. Went to Columbia. Um, got the second round stoppage. Mm -hmm. um, immediately went back to the gym. Like literally, I I fought that Saturday. Went back to the gym Monday. Sparred that Tuesday. Like it was him right. you know, quick. You know, said I'm I'm you know trying to roll now. I'm trying to keep the fights coming. I'm trying to stay more active. I'm trying to be more active than I was before the pandemic. Right. So, um, when we get a call from um uh, from from marshall you know he presented the paul crow fight mm -hmm. you know first time on showbox which is what i was asking him for for a long time so right. that's all he had to say boy i'm like yo yeah i'm about to get real exposure now right and i finally get that get that um that showbox you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. i take the fight you know, I know Paul Crow had a lot of experience. I know Paul Crow was an Olympian. You know, I know he had a deep pedigree. You know, I knew he had some power. I knew all that. But, mm -hmm. you know, I feel like, oh, yeah, this is my shot. You know, I feel like this is my first shot. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so I'm hyped up. Right. Like, I'm up. I've been one of fight show by for years. I remember mean, I was telling you how I was seeing mm -hmm. guys. Like, working. Yeah. On two undefeated mm -hmm. prospects and still couldn't get on show. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? I said training camp was rigorous, hard. You know what I'm saying? I was training two, three times a day. You know, damn near overworked myself. But you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Right. Went in that fight, prepared. You know, we worked hard. You know, and uh, like I said, I took a two year layoff and I had that one fight in Colombia and then, you know, went right into that. So, you know, I feel like I still was shaking off. Some rust getting back into myself, you know yep. what I'm saying? Right. You notice in that boxing a little bit more, you know what I'm saying? Like right. easy wobble, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But those kind of boxing skills staying rangy. But the, the crazy thing about it was it was working, you know what I'm saying? Right. He, was, he was falling into my counters, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They were powerful. He was feeling them. You know, I was, you know, shaking them up with shots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, having big moments in a fight. Yeah. Um, I remember, you know, I recall the, the ropes really, you know, the only buck one round. Yes, the sir. Round. I remember. Big moments. The fight at the end of the sixth round, boom, we bang hits and a cut open up. Mm -hmm. Open up. Right. And well, I, the referee didn't acknowledge stop, nothing. Like, you know, I right. boom, bang heads got a cut, like in the middle of the fight, literally kept going, you know. Mm -hmm. fight, and, no what time know, trying, I said, Paul, he kind of see, he kind of see, so he seen that it kind of boost energy. You know what I'm saying? And right. For doing what he was supposed to do, trying right. to cut. Right. So you know, I feel still eight round, um, especially eighth round. I definitely feel like went to win that round, and I even like you know kind of finished off with like two flurries at the end of the round, and really right. just. Put that period on it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I really feel like you know, like you said at the end of the fight, boom, I go jump on the ropes, you know what I'm saying? Right. I'm confident as hell that I just you know I put on the show, you know what I'm saying? You did, you did, you, did. you know what I'm saying? Crazy moments in that fight, so feeling mm -hmm. good, you know. I knew in my head I'm I got this one for sure. 
know what I'm saying? I just outworked him, you know what I'm saying? I, I thought for sure him. he lost that fight. I thought for sure he lost that fight. I'm not going to hold you. I, and, and again, being that was him being undefeated, and that was the first time that he'd been pushed that way. Uh, being honest, I definitely thought he lost that fight. And uh, again, that's why I highlighted this one as well, because again, it's just part of your journey. And again, you you turn it around fighting these experienced, undefeated guys that's probably pegged to beat you that in their mind, they, they thinking they got one. They seeing a the guy with one knockout, but they don't know you ain't a guy that's in there to box and dance as, as you know, your more recent opponent, as we get into, we work on our way till he had to learn the hard way. But I, I you know, I noticed also after you took on Paul Crow and again, I, he lost that fight, in my opinion, bro. You you did our work. I mean, it's the reason you had the amount of confidence. It's, it's a, and I know that I'm, I can't be the first person that I told you that I think you won that that fight. Just straight, I just think you did the better work. You outworked the man, and uh, you weathered any storm that was Paul Crow. I think that was his his first loss, in my in my honest opinion. And I think that should have been another O for you. But nonetheless, you know, you not a, you not one to cry over spilled milk, and you and, always seem to keep. Hey. So at the end of the day, man, I, you know, I got to give, you know, credit what credit's due. At the end of the day, he did put his chin down and he dogged his way forward. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Absolutely. I got to give credit what credit's due. And I just had to learn from that fight. You know, I had to come right. off that fight. Like right. I said, not about it. And, you know, what part of my game I could get better at. And that's what we did. You know, and we knew that was only my second fight coming from a two-year layoff. You right. know, and I'm. Another yeah. undefeated guy, y'all. Two year layoff, man. So heavy, not just an undefeated guy, but a guy with, with skills, you know. Paul Crow. Actual skill, right? Paul Crow is yeah. a good fighter, right? You know what I'm right. You know, I, I know. You know, I was matching myself up hard. You know what I'm saying? So the only thing I could do was go in the gym, right? See, you know, get back. I said, just get back to myself, you know, because before the pandemic, I was, you know, going crazy. You know what I'm saying? I was taking O oh, after. I was, you know, right, um, right, right. I feel like that them two years, you know, of not fighting, even though I was training, I was training in the gym. Right. You know, I was telling me, oh, you know, we're gonna we're gonna get you on this one, we're gonna get you on that card, we're gonna help you out, we're gonna get you on this one. So mm -hmm. the whole time training hard, I'm in camps, you know, and I'm getting ready to fight and then boom, right, it'll fall. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know how the business of boxing is, like yeah, I said, right. I just you know, I ain't, you know, the pandemic, I ain't get, I wasn't the ones, one of the ones that get in the bubble or, you know, right. could get, you know, right. I ain't, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Right. So I said, we knew we had to bring back to myself. So boom, after that, we got Marlon Harrington now. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Right. Well, you do, you, you helping me out. That's the next spot <laughs> I was moving to. Talk to me, man. You got, let me make this clear. Marlon Harrington, another undefeated guy after just fighting Paul Crow. You get him saying you turn around, you fight. This is another mean of fight. Eight and no. This dude has seven knockouts, I believe. Talk to me. So, you know, we, we get presented uh, Marlon Harrington, you know, mm -hmm. on show. And like I said, when you when you bring in, when you bring up Showbox, it ain't no turning down, no fights. It ain't, you know what I'm saying? Right, oh, absolutely. Man. They got for me. Right. I, you know what I'm saying? I say right. I get my this show box is up, you know. Right. Um, you know, I'm in the gym training hard, fixing all the holes in my game, you know, and fixing up things that, you know, I feel I could have did better in Paul Crow fight. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you know what I'm saying? And I get the Marlon Heron to fight. I you know, I said I was going through a lot during that fight. Um a week right. before that fight, my uh my best friend had passed away. You know what I'm saying? I had it's found my best friend. Right. Right. And uh, before the fight, you know, um, and I thought I wasn't going to fight, to be honest, because I mm -hmm. wasn't going to miss the mm -hmm. His family actually planned a funeral around my fight, you know, so I could still go fight. You know what I'm saying? So and I just, uh, and I'm uh, my condolences, and I appreciate you sharing this with us. And again, it's a reason why I went this direction. I could have sat here and asked you a whole bunch of random questions, but it's a reason I wanted you to kind of build up to really highlight your significant points in your career to show you what kind of path that you took. And these are the yeah. type of fighters. You are the type of fighter that people need to get behind, but not to cut you off, but go ahead, talk to me. You know, I'm like, you know, I'm like, man, I'm a dedicated fighter. It's gonna be for, for mm -hmm. my boy Dex. You know what I'm saying? So, right. So, 
dedicated that fight, you know, for him, you know, going into that fight, just knowing I said I ain't going to lose, you know, and shout out to Marlon Hanson, you know what I'm saying? He had, he actually had some ill, you know, I remember watching some tape on him. I was like, oh, shit, this guy, he ain't just no power punch. Like, he can, he can move, he can create distance, he can counter, you know what I'm saying? He got right. power in his hands. I'm like, all right, you know, this is gonna be it's gonna be a tough one right here, you know. So I trained hard, got the best work I could get. Um and we went into that fight prepared, you know. The first couple rounds, you know, was me finding my rhythm, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Right. Making getting hit with, you know, no big shots and uh -huh. things like that. Right. Finding my and uh once I found my jab, caught my rhythm and started getting inside, getting to that body, mm -hmm. you know over from there, you know, once I start, you know, finding the body shots, pushing them back, you know, I start, you know, just walking them down, getting to that body, working the body, coming up to the head. Right. You know, being first, being last, you know, I just found that good rhythm. Right. I know we knew that he never been past the fourth round before. So, you know, once we knew we got past that fourth round and, you know, we was hitting that body, we was like, oh yeah, you know, we he about to be into some waters he never been into mm -hmm. before. Right. 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 It was the real we had on him, and uh, uh, we, you know, we got the win. You know, on the you got a great win. You got a, you got a, you got a damn good win, and it's still the only loss on his resume. And he turned around. I want to let y'all know he turned around in his very next fight and fought a guy who was nine and zero and knocked him out. Wow, yeah. Man. And he got another fight coming up. So he's the only loss on his resume is still to you. And the guy he fought right after that was an undefeated guy that he clinked up and got out of there. So forget the date, but he got another fight coming up as well. So yeah. just to throw that out there, man, we, just in case anybody might have lost track, I believe that is number four for him, man. That's number four, man. And we moving along, which is, you know, pretty much going to bring me, you know, um, to your next to your more recent fight your most recent win to me i think it, it was a very big win not just because of god being undefeated not just because of that because of the uh you know i guess the expectation of of a yo elvis gomez knowing the cuban uh you know olympian knockout artist six and oh five ko's but um i'm gonna i'm gonna be honest with you um i'm gonna just tell you the moment moment and salute to my bro mo city i got to play this i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you for me the moment I felt like, you know, it was over for him. I'm going to just, I'm going to have him play this for you. I tell you what, none of the guys that's on his resume can even compare to me at all. You do your research and look at my resume. This won't even be my toughest fight, to be honest with you. I been I fought Kermit Centron with only nine fights. Um, in one year, I beat like 300 feeder fighters. That's what I do, you know. I get in there and I'm a surprise factor, you know. They 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 think they know who they getting in there with until they get in there with me, and then they find out. But by the time they get in there with me, it's too late. If you, I, I don't know about everybody else. I don't know what they get out of these, you know, these post fire, these, you know, these press conferences when when y'all dudes grab the mic. But you know, I always watch because it's something. It's always something small. Maybe you can pick up on. And I'm just being honest with you. From there, the the which the way you said what you said, why it resonated with me, and why I believed everything you said because you wasn't selling it. You wasn't up there like yeah, I'm gonna do this and. You, you really meant everything you said. And, and again, I felt like the what you said is exactly how that fight played out. You got in there with a guy, might have thrown one thing. But I, I and this is, I, honestly, I'm, I watched this fight very close. I seen the confidence waver from this guy as the fight wore on. And it seemed like it got to a point in this fight where this dude was like, damn. And it was like you said, it's just, it was too late for him. So, I mean, you know, take me through that because at this point, I think you had six. You fought. He's another southpaw. You fought six southpaws up until that point, and this uh -huh. would be number seven for you. So you're getting in there with a, another guy that they're probably pegging you to lose to. That they're, you know, I don't want to call him hype because I think Yo Elvis is very talented. I don't think he's hype. I think he the goods, but I think he just ran into 
a guy that was prepared and, and, and understood what needed to be done to win the fight. So again, man, take me through it, man. How was you? And you moved up to middleweight at that yeah. to fight this guy, man. So I, I hope everybody really been listening to, to this journey and why I went this direction with this man, just highlighting significant moments and, and how he got to where he was at. And I just don't see one reason why we can't support a fighter a hundred percent that's moving this way. And as again, that's why I called you champ when you got up here, because you move like one. But again, getting into this fight, man, tell me what was your feelings going into it? Um, man, this, I mean, it was, that's when I thought, you know, a camp couldn't get better, you know, when right. we have a better camp, you know what I'm saying? We have a, man, we probably had one of the best camps in boxing, I feel mm -hmm. like, you know, because first, because we was already in the gym going hard. Right. Four, I swear, like three weeks before this fight, before we got off of the fight, I, um, Call my pops on the phone. I was like, pops, let's get in the gym. Let's get in the gym crazy. Let's, you know, we in the gym, but let's like, let's get in the camp mode. Like, mm -hmm. let's get, let's get crazy sharp. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He was like, he was like, all right, um, I got a feeling, pops. I just got a, I got a feeling. You know what I'm saying? I'm mm -hmm. like, man, mm -hmm. it was nine months ago since my last fight on Showbox. Right. One. I'm like, bro, they they going to call. They got to eventually call, bro. You know what I'm saying? Eventually. You know what I'm saying? So I was right. like, man, let's just, get, let's just get ahead of the curve. Let's just get in the gym crazy hard. So right. gym going hard. We in camp mode. We don't have a date, but we just like in camp mode, though. Like we getting ready for a fight already. Mm -hmm. Staying ready so you ain't got to get ready. Championship yeah. attitude, man. Yep. Yeah, like five weeks before the fight. Boom, Marshall called like, "Hey man, you know, boom, I got y'all offer to fight on on a uh, Showtime." And I'm like, "Oh, another Showbox?" He yeah. like, "No, Showtime Championship, Showtime." I'm like, what? Yes, sir. So yeah, he like, only thing he like, would you fight this dude at 160? I was like, shit, I'll fight this dude at 68. I don't give a damn. <laughs> he with like, all the smoke, man. Ain't that what we say? We like fighters that's with all the smoke. Here we go. Like, talk to me. You know what I'm saying? It's my opportunity. You know what I'm saying? They gave me the name. I ain't, I ain't even look at it. I'm just like, whatever. I don't care who it is. You know, mm -hmm. you and I, don't, I don't care, bro. Showtime right. championship. I'm looking at this like a, like a championship fight. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I feel so my cam go right, I could beat anybody. You know what I'm saying? So right. already going hard already. And then now I got five more weeks. Mm -hmm. Five more. Already. I was I was waiting for them to say, like, yeah, we got you a shot. So showtime championship in two weeks. I'm ready for that. Like mm -hmm. two weeks. I'm you know what I'm saying? Right. Already pretty sparring, already going hard. But like five weeks. I'm like, oh yeah, this it's over with. No matter who I fight, it's over with. Right. That's eight weeks. You know what I'm saying? So, right. And then plus with this, you know, you get that contract in, that just amp, amp you up even more, you know what I'm saying? Because now it's in camp mode. Hey, now you're like, you see the light at the end of the tunnel, you got a destination. Right. Mm -hmm. Easier to go. So, well, we, we turn the training camp up even more, you know what I'm saying? And we got the help from uh, Shakur Stevenson. He seen me. In camp. He a good softball look, so you know he won the best mm -hmm. softball game right now. Even right. though he fight, uh, you know what I'm saying? Right. I'm thinking he always not about to be as fast as him, as smart as him. Can't counter on the level Shakur Stevenson counter on. I right. seen him fight. Right. Oh, right. No way he timing nothing like Shakur. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, so we use that work to our advantage. Shakur right. was giving in 11 rounds. Like a lot of rounds, you know what I'm saying? So this man so picks one, y'all, just for that middleweight for y'all, for y'all Shakur haters out there. Just had to throw that out there. Talk to me, bro. Yeah, different, bro. You get it in the middleweight, you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying uh -huh. that's different. But yeah. um, um I was sparring him. I sparred yeah. like I sparred light heavyweights, uh yeah. I sparred his light heavyweights, um um Paul. I was for uh, 
boy, he was South Paul. He fight 168 South Spar, like, you know, secure the Spar heavy guys. Right. You know, me, uh, you know, we'll put, we get like three of them, and three of them will give me three, four rounds a piece, you know, just. Yeah, all school. quality work. All quality and work. He too, like, this is when, like, I don't know if you hear it, but like in Houston, Texas, three weeks straight, we was 100 degree weather or above. Mm-hmm. Wow, man, it was bleeding. And you working in that? You know, it was, just, it was it was rigorous. It was hard. You know, what right. I'm saying? And we, we was going Monday through Sunday. You know, sometimes it like my pops would make me rest. It made me take rest. Let me just chill. Mm-hmm. But for the most, and then Monday through Sunday, going crazy yeah. all the way. Like we didn't take a rest. And like we just we just pray hard all the way. Fight so, like you know, in, in sparring, I was you know I was sharp, went missing on shot. Mm-hmm. Never been sharp before my movement never been this sharp. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? This strong before. You know I had help with my nutrition. Um, I said I move up to sixty, but I was I was already like one seven like two weeks before. Right. Like under for like two weeks leading up to. Like, Damn. I remember the weigh in. So the morning of the weigh in, I had woke up at 156. Right. Now, hey, I wasn't trying to work that light. Yeah, <laughs> man, man. See, that's because you put in that dog work. I just think you was you was focused and ready to go, man. I think in preparation, I don't know. I mean, maybe you could give me a little peek, maybe a, a thought as to what might have been different about this camp that made you feel like it was one of your best camps. Cause you I noticed you said just when you thought a camp could get better. You have an even better camp. And I don't know. I did just think mentally you were prepared. Like, because you, you told your dad, hey man, let's get, let's, let's go get in the gym. Let's get super sharp. It just seemed like you felt that an opportunity yeah. was coming and you truly wanted yeah. to be prepared, not just ready, but prepared physically and mentally. And I think when you got into that fight, your execution for me was like A1. I felt like you fought the perfect fight to fight with a guy like that with, with power. You know, just the way. You just don't see guys that with your height be able to generate the type of leverage that you was generating in close with this dude. And I, you can see the look from me watching. I'm like, he didn't expect it. Like, he, you getting hit with shots coming on different angles. I'm like, bro. And I see you got a beard on you, too, because you took some. But you didn't take too many. You took some. You didn't take too many. You fought with a cut. I mean, for damn near, what, the whole fight? So, I mean, it, it, was a, it was a great showing for you, bro. I think your execution was A1 your mentality and i think you had your mind made up and i appreciated the consistency within your performance and not to change what you didn't need to change like it was working there was no need to start giving him opportunities to be successful no you you nullified a lot of what he liked to do you neutralized his power for the most part i just don't think he was ready for the, the style of fighting that you brought and again it might not be the prettiest but when it's effective this intelligence, I kept telling people watching, it's a method to your madness and what you are doing if you just keep watching it. And I think you started to win people over in live time as they seen how you were executing and what, what you actually were taking away from this dude. And I, I, I think that was one of the, the better performances for an upset that you've seen in a while, man. Again, a strong, strong, consistent performance with a guy that you moved up and wait to fight. That was, you know, pretty much a knockout artist peg that, you know, you know, you know, everybody think he was coming in there to get a knockout. And I think you surprised a lot of people and, you know, got to give credit to your Elvis. I mean, um, I definitely just don't think he was ready for that, but he's a damn good fighter. I don't think no less of him, but I, I know. If he, 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 fight, yo, it was, yo, it was a strong, talk to him, strong talk to him. I feel like, um, like, like, just like you said, I don't think he was, uh, he was just ready for for the pedigree that I bought when it come to fighting professionally. Like, yeah, he he had over three hundred amateur fights, but right. you know the game and the amateur game is a little different, bro. We right, get, right, absolutely. A lot of things inside the professional ring and in the amateur fight, and there's mm-hmm. a lot of things you can't get away with in a pro ring that you do in the amateurs. Like, example, pulling straight back. You know, that's right. very. Amateur. You caught and that. You got that knockdown. Back, mm-hmm. but he still has that in him, you know, pulling mm-hmm. straight back, hands down, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, you know, when you're in there with a vet, you know, 
we looking for them little small holes. You know what I'm saying? We when you keep going in this game, you learn to work smarter, not harder. You know what I'm saying? So exactly, exactly. You looking, you looking for them little small mistakes that you right. can explore. Right. And that's, that's all I was doing in the fight. You know, like right. I see. You know, if you know, I pressed up against him. You know, he's gonna. You know, try to pull out. You know what I'm right. saying? And I, that, every time we create that little space, boom, body shots, boom, head shots. You know what I'm saying? So just a little thing that he, like you said, he just with only six fights. Right, right. More, right. You know what I'm saying? He needed a couple more tough fights before he fought me. And that's what I was trying to tell him at the press conference. But, you know, at the end of the day, he was what they call the Cuban sensation, you know? Right, right, right. And I think uh, he, he still is that, right? But you just you you one of them guys. I'm tired of like I, I like I'm tired of fighting like possibly like well he was a contender because he beat Coda that made him a contender you know they fast right. track beat right. Coda. At the end of the day I'm like man even when I win like you know I'm gonna feel like I really just did what I was supposed to do you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying mm -hmm. right I get yeah. it but you you did it at a high level and you did it damn well and I and I think. The performance shocked many. It's not that, that you just won. It's how you won. And you can't argue that. They couldn't even take that from you if they wanted to. It, they just couldn't do it. And it's a learning experience for not only him, but you as well. And the win, you got some things that you learned maybe about yourself. But, again, application and execution to me was spot on, man. And understanding what needed to be done in, from, from round to round and executing that. And having a beard whenever he did land a nice little shot because he landed a few. And once I seen that and I seen no no buckling of the legs, no real backward step, I was like, oh, man, the only shot is if you get tired. And I was like, I just don't think you're going to get tired. I think this is what you do. If anybody's seen you fight, that's what you do. And you can go, you know, 15 rounds doing what you wanted to do if you needed to. I believe that. So, I mean, another great win, man. And I hope everybody understood you know, his path to where he is at now and why they calling this man the old snatcher. And I think that was number five, if I'm counting right. You get what I'm saying? So, you know, snatch many of O's. I think it's a very fitting nickname. I think, you know, we highlighted some of your best moments. And I think it is it's, it's not even a, it, this. I, don't, I hate to say it's only the beginning, but you it's not that you're just getting started, but you it's a lot more people to catch on. And, and it's not over for you is what I'm saying. It's a lot more in store for you. And I think you, you just... I think you got the work ethic, the attitude, the team. Like, you got the things that that matter. You get what I'm saying? You get it. You live that fighter's lifestyle, and I think that continuously puts you in a position to be successful. And I think I heard you speaking about, you know, family and things like that. Like, I've seen after you won this fight, you know, I, you said, Mama, Mama, I made it. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? And, and I, I, even that, even that to me is like <laughs> – Bro, this man don't try to sell it to you. He is who he is, but you might not know if you're not paying attention. You get what I'm saying? So explain to the people, man, just how important, man, the family has been in, in, in your in your career and, and how they've impacted your success as a fighter. Uh, man, just by supporting me, you know what I'm saying? If it weren't for my family, I probably wouldn't be boxing right now, you know, especially, you know, after the last couple of years I had, you know right. what I'm saying? You know, two best friends. You know, my first when he died, he died in uh, 2021. Levon, my boy Nan Dex, boom, died 2022. Right. My yeah. closest, yeah. closest partners. You know what I'm saying? In two years, so like it was, it was tough. You know what I'm saying? Right. Family, family, the ones that you know what I'm saying that they gave me that attention and you know that love that I needed. You know to keep. Uh, me to keep going right i'm i'm glad you got that bro because um i think um i think this is what you're supposed to be doing man i think you're great at what you do um like i said like you like you've said on, on a number of occasions you know starting out three and one ain't nothing super special about that but yeah. after sitting here and if anybody from the outside listening into the build that we just did and like i said i keep pointing out it's the reason why i highlighted those significant points because you just didn't stumble into these situations you get what i'm saying they, and they damn sure wasn't just given to you wasn't given nothing so you took it you get what i'm saying and you ain't quit on yourself most importantly man a lot of people could have you could have wrote yourself off after a loss 
you could have wrote yourself out, out there no contest anything right but you you continue to get in there and test and challenge yourself against i think quality guys you know that that haven't taken l's and i think there's something to be said about that again i wanted to highlight those specific moments because i believe that's what makes you special your level of special you get what i'm saying your your, your road is just different than the average guy and um i think you got a lot left for this sport man and uh, we we 100 percent here is gonna keep rocking with you i hope i get a chance to build with you again and be but before i do let you get out of here i do re, I did, I did hear you recall recall hearing you say <laughs> and this is again y'all throwback fighter mentality that's what i really wanted to highlight and what makes this man special and why we should get behind him anybody from 154 to 160 can get the smoke you stand on that anybody yeah. Anybody. I stand up. Anybody, you know, we we are two division um, fighter right now. You know, I'm taking fights at 54 or 60. I'm actually whichever the biggest fight. That's the one we're gonna take. You know what I'm yeah. saying? We doors open at 54, 60 to to just try to get the biggest opportunity because, like, right, me, we kind of like you know. Our patience we ran short, you know what I'm saying? With this not, sport, you know? but but nah, I mean, you've put it, you yeah. put it in, so it's not, yeah. I don't think you're impatient, I just think you're ready to get what I call your just do. That's all, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I think you, I think you've shown patience, I think you show resilience, uh, the ability to stand tall in, in tough moments, to continuously challenge yourself, to really not cherry pick your way to where you at right now, so you just. You know, anybody, bro. we ready to put it in the ring with anybody, bro. Right, we the fight, bro. Like we, right. we ready to put it in the ring with anybody. You know, I'm not. We ain't trying to talk about a lot of stuff, bro, because it ain't personal, bro. It's just boxing, bro. It's we boxing, trying, right? We trying to get, bro. That's all we trying to do is get in the ring with the best, um, because to be the best, you got to fight the best. So, like, I'm just trying to prove that my skills, the and way I, I fight, with the best in the world, right? Is it's just better than everybody in my right. weight, right? Right. One fifty four or one sixty, and we will take. We gonna take the toughest guy they give us. You know, we gonna take the hardest fight we possibly right. could. Take. There's that fifty four or sixty. We want the biggest fight. We want the biggest risk. We right. ready to go for. Right. And again, man, that, that's just an attitude that I want to keep. You know, stress that this is that's a mentality that we got to support in the sport. Just don't have a ton of guys. How many guys can come here and say it? And I played that clip for a reason. Salute to my bro, Mo City, man. That's my guy right there. Good dude, man. It's the reason I played that because, you know, you made people believers. And you didn't have to sell it to nobody. You meant what you said. You went out there and you executed that way. And even after you won, you didn't do a lot of, you get what I'm saying? You didn't do a lot of extra. You It was raw emotion right there that I felt because I know just, just following a career and, and some of these difficult moments and little pit stops and not being able to fight for two years, man. Come on. This is how you, this is how you eat. This is what you love to do. You think you enjoyed any moment of not fighting for two years, but having to consist consistently train and, and just not say, you know what the hell with this. So again, I hope we, I, no, I know we did a hell of a job highlighting what makes you special. And I don't think we came up with any reason why a person can't get behind you 100 percent that that's what it's all about that's what these bills are supposed to do like let people really know wh who marquise taylor is as a fighter and again we just highlighted what made you special and i think you're going to continue to prove that and i got a saying and, and I, I say this because i mean it because you know today is a prime example of that you know i rock with fighters win lose or draw i root for you inside the ring and outside the ring as a as an individual as a man you get what i'm saying so and we all seen cool boy Steph had a tough loss today. Watch yeah. how many people jump ship after a loss. It's yeah. amazing. You can prove right. it 21 times. And much like you, which I have in common, y'all battle tested. He had about nine undefeated guys on his resume in 21 fights. Yeah. I, Look, about to say that. Look, man, Steph had, uh, came down to Houston and trained for a little bit at, mm -hmm. uh, at J Gym. So um, he was down there. He a cool dude, man. Right. And uh, he was part and you know, I used to we used to talk like you know, people calling me the old snatcher, but mm -hmm. we me and him was talking, I think it was like seven or eight undefeated on his record. Right. That he beat. Right. So we used to, I was like, I used to be like, was you know, you know, I got five, you know, I'm trying to be mm -hmm. like you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hey man, one thing about me, 
we go we gonna rock with you win lose or draw bro win lose or draw and we ain't bank, banking on you losing you know what i'm saying we ain't banking on you losing we seen you prove it a, a number of times to to know that you got what it takes to to be in there with anybody bro and i not and you and you know the cheat code and you know the cheat code dudes yeah. thinking you know you look at that resume you might see the ko and be like ah oh, he gonna come in here and box nah yeah. Bro coming yeah. in here to fight. That's the cheat code. A lot of y'all yeah. dudes want a box. He can do both. And again, if he sees that you can do the other, and that's the cheat code to me, which is fight, you're going to be in yeah. for a long night, bro. A long, aggravating night. And I hear about the work that you put in in the gym. Power. Mm -hmm. Come to the ring. got no power. You make them technical mistakes, like having your hands down, pulling out. You're going to see what happens. You're going to be on the right. mat. <laughs> <laughs> right especially when you understand not to stay at the end of his punches where he's strong but to crowd him where he can't generate as much power smother him and work him and and from what i understand i think you one of the hardest guys to work with because of your work rate the way you fight and and, and i think you know i don't think from what i hear is some of the most tiresome work like you really get in there and give some of the absolute best fighters the toughest work 711 punches 711 punches you tell me like before, before before i fight i think the winner threw like 450 something i threw 711 punches man 70 71 punches around that's work man and that again that's that's that that's that earl spins work rate that we talk about that's ridiculous <laughs> and it's effective work because it's mentally and physically wearing his guy down and we've seen that in your last fight it was a beautiful performance great win I hope that I hope your phone continue to ring because you deserve it. You 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 took the hard route. I mean, I think you've proven that you'll take the, the tough fights out there. And like I said, I think it's a ton of more opportunities for you. And we definitely gonna be here supporting you the whole entire way, bro. Uh, the whole entire way. So I ain't wanna keep you too much longer. I know you got things to do. I know you got some training to do, don't you? Training to do for sure. Damn. It never stops, man. So again, man, I appreciate your time, man. I appreciate you coming up here, building with me. And just to let you know, me and the people, the family over here, we're going to be rocking with you, man. We're going to be watching. And, um, you know, keep us in the loop, man. You know, when next time you're stepping in the ring, look, we're going to be here. We're going to be calling that fight live, just like we did your last one. And again, you just got our support, man. Keep being great chat and, and i can't wait to see your next fight bro i can't wait to see the next one so with For that sure. man, let me let you get up out of here y'all this is the chat marvelous marquise taylor man let the people know real quick the social media so we can know where to follow you i'm already following you, but you know follow me on Instagram and twitter marvelous underscore keys q u i s as marvelous m-a-r-v-e-l-u-s underscore q u i s on twitter and Instagram right and they they asked a family asking for you to take tim zoo oh and he said he with that y'all know he with that y'all know he with yeah. that um, i've been calling <laughs> him before this last win they they laughed at me and said that that uh he had too much power for me it was too right. good for me right now like you know he ain't got too much power he ain't too good for me he got people that can hide him real good and he ain't yeah. got to get like, that's bro you know what I'm saying? It ain't that he got too much. Nah, he he got a lot of protection. You know what I'm saying? I get it, son of a legend. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, uh, <laughs> talk to him, chat. That's why we rocking with you, man. That's hey, why right. we rocking with you. Oh, bro, they can talk all that shit, but when we get in the square, like I, you know, I change, I I I, I change people around. Like you said, they don't believe. I make them believe. You know what I'm saying? I turn, I, I turn. The commentators thoughts around on me in the fight i turn the crowd thoughts around on me i mm -hmm. turn the viewers around. yeah the people watching you know what I'm yes you know, yes sir get knocked down the third fourth round but by the sixth round they like oh this guy needs a knockout to be taken you know? nah huh talk and, to him and by the time they realize what's going on it's, it's too, too late, late. It's too late, man. Book it, man. Much love and appreciation, man. Appreciate your time. We locked in for real. Like I said, we truly support you over here. This was all about building, letting the people know your path, your journey, what makes you great. And I think we did a hell of a job doing that. And I'm going to be in touch. I'm going to be checking for you, man. And we're going to be supporting, bro. For sure. Appreciate you, champ. Appreciate you, too. Love.
and salute to everybody in the building. That's the chat. Marvelous Marquise Taylor, aka the old snatcher, man. Um, I went a different way with this today. I definitely wanted to make sure I highlighted. I think L Dub Boxing was good, my bro. I wanted to highlight what made him special, man. And uh Tim Zoo might get Lubin yet next. That'd be a good fight, bro. That'd be a good fight, fun fight to watch. Just wanted to highlight some of the things that made the young king special, man. Hope everybody, if y'all not already following him, y'all y'all follow him, support him, a hundred percent, man. Because I think he's a throwback fighter to me. I don't care about popularity, records, things of that nature. I really care about the sport and fighters that behave accordingly, right? And that, and and he moves like a real fighter, like a real champion. He's about to smoke. The, the man was on box rec, ser searching for an opponent, y'all, searching for an opponent. <laughs> you get him saying like he fighting you know, 40, 48 fight veterans with nine fights and stuff like that. So get what I'm saying? Fighting undefeated guys and money not even being all the way right, but because he believed in himself, he taking fights and, and making the most out of, man. That's just something I'm going to always be able to support and salute and rock with. You know what I mean? So with that, I'm not going to keep y'all in here no longer, man. Y'all know the grind don't stop. I'm going to see if I can make it back. I don't know if I'm going to make it back in my – um. At my normal time, but I'm gonna try to, y'all. So with the, with that, man, y'all make sure y'all enjoy the rest of y'all. Good this good Tuesday, cool boy stuff. We still rocking with you a million percent. Um, uh, monster anyway, hell of a performance, man. You one of them dudes, man. Special, special, one of the special smaller guys, man. So salute to boxing, salute to the chat, Marquise Taylor, man. Y'all enjoy the rest of y'all Tuesday. Y'all probably see me again. If I can make it work, we're going to do it. But, you know, we always working, y'all. So with that, we're going to get up out of here, y'all. Peace. T's AJ64, Miss Joette, Ghost, the rest of the team, man. Love, man. We out.